Hello everyone and a warm welcome back to the Lena AI podcast. Our latest addition features Gaurav Sharda, the C- CTO, Chief Technology Officer at Beacon Mobility. Uh thank you so much for taking your time and joining us Gaurav. We'd love it if you could briefly introduce yourself and Beacon Mobility to the audience. So Firstly, Adit, thank you so much for having me on the podcast. Very happy to be here. Uh, absolutely, I'll give you a brief introduction about Beacon Mobility and like about a little bit about my journey uh, into getting into this role. So, Beacon Mobility is a high needs transportation provider. Our goal is to be the best high needs transportation provider out there. We enable people to live, learn, and achieve. Uh, that is our motto. And uh, I am the chief technology officer for Beacon. Have been with the company for about two years now. I started off in the HR technology area, where I was leading the implementation of Workday, uh, which was our simplified uh, single HR payroll platform for all the various companies we have under the Beacon umbrella. And the goal with that also was to simplify our people experiences. And I moved into the CTO role in January of 2023. where i'm responsible for the overall technology area for beacon in this role i'm heading various digital transformation initiatives uh, with the goal of creating the best in class employee and customer experiences and support the rapid growth of uh, beacon as an organization and before beacon i worked in like in organizations like general mills and lifetime where i've led a lot of uh, digital uh, transformation initiatives Mm-hmm. and i did some consulting prior to that for about 3 years uh uh in cli- with clients like microsoft comcast and st jude medical for me the sweet spot is like when we are able to utilize technology and creates a difference in the organization and people's day to day lives the i absolutely enjoy that feeling makes sense gaurav for for the clarity of the audience so beacon mobility essentially does for example you know runs bus services in school districts right for example is that your biggest business right now gaurav or is there something else that's a bigger chunk of your business that is correct adit so we are uh, our big chunk of the business is uh, we are a transportation provider for school districts and we also serve para transit agencies as well in a few states so we service transit agencies which is a 24/7 business uh and that's also a smaller part of our business so it's it's a bit more than the school districts where we also serve uh, para transit contracts as well and we also have uh, an alternative transportation umbrella as well which is uh, growing very rapidly as you're aware right like there are a lot of gaps in the market right now uh, with yep. driver shortage situations that alternative transportation can be a really good fit in all the areas so we are also expanding in that particular uh, uh business line as well Makes sense. Thank you so much for that introduction, Gaurav. So, with that, let us, you know, quickly start off uh, with me asking you questions. Again, it has to be. It will be an open conversation. So, hopefully, we'll be able to add a lot of value to our audience here. So, my first question to you is: uh, You know, you hold a very crucial leadership position. What are the most significant lessons you have learned along your career path that have contributed to your success? Yeah. So as I mentioned right throughout my professional experience I've been involved in a lot of digital transformation initiatives uh and like you know those initiatives have have been at various stages of organizations maturity and with that journey I've gained I'll try to bucket it into two insights I've gained throughout that experience in the last decade or so right for this I've come to realize that the success of these transformations they rely more on the effective management of people and management of the change around the initiative rather than solely focusing on the technology itself technology is actually like the easier part managing people and change around it is the harder part of this so it is very crucial to continuously emphasize the reasons behind why we are making these big changes from a transformation perspective and the benefits they are going to bring to the intended audiences throughout the entire transformation process it, it is very crucial right the second thing which i have learned is it's not only about the actions you are taking throughout the initiatives it's about how are you 
were like, you know, going about executing these actions. And again, it, it hits on the first point a little bit, but engaging people and fostering a very collaborative approach are key factors in achieving long-term success. Ultimately, it's the interactions between individuals that drive progress. Technology is useless if people are not going to use it. And I love, like, you know, as one of the African proverb states, if you want to go fast, you go alone. But if you want to go further, you go together. And I absolutely believe in that. No, makes a lot of sense, Gaurav. So, you know, generally I've seen, you know, people having this specific insight only after some fiasco, right? <laughs> Not fiasco as such, but, you know, after they invested a lot in a big transformation and they spent a lot of time and then, you know, essentially nothing happened. So, like, can you share one story uh, about one such experience which actually led you to this, like a big ERP project or CRM project that, you know, probably led to this understanding that, you know, technology works, but, well, we forgot the other 80% of it. <laughs> you're, you're spot on, Adet. I mean, so many of those stories in the earlier part of the career. So I come from a, like, you know, true development background, right? Like, I'm a true IT guy at, at its heart. Uh, and when I was in the early part of my career, I was doing in my consulting days, this is about 10, 15 years ago now, right. I was involved in a lot of SAP transformations. So I uh, did a lot of like, you know, lift and, and you're aware of how massive these like, you know, implementations are. So yeah. I did a lot of work in SAP HR space, uh, recruiting, payroll. And like there were uh, the first project I undertook, like I was very heavy focused on finding the solutions, right? What is that perfect solution, which is what all, all the problems people may have. And there was so much focus on finding the right solution and innovative way of doing things within the guardrails of SAP. So uh, one such initiative happened in the recruiting space where like we thought we had the perfect solution. Right. And we, we thought again, right, like you do all your nine yards around, you do business testing, try to get business involved in the requirements phase. And what we realized was, and, and back in the days, like you know, the waterfall approach was very prevalent. So it was like you gather the requirements, then you go off in your silo bubble and you're trying to do your development. And then you're coming back to the business and hey, here is like, we think we have gotten everything covered. And uh, like eye-opening stuff, right? Like we gather the requirements, you come out like three, four months later and have a product in place to show to the business during testing. And it, it was just completely off the mark. Yeah, like we thought about doing this, like it turned out that way. The recruiting processes were supposed to be like very streamlined and they weren't. And like, you know, there, there are limitations around SAP as well, which existed back in the day. So you're living with that too. Yeah, but that opened up the, the eyes very fast, right? It's not about the technology, like technology, like you, you can do X, Y, and Z, right? Like there are, there are always where you'll figure out things to solve the business problems. It's truly about keeping the business in the know. And that opportunity highlighted, like, you know, in hindsight, I wish like we would have just pulled in the business, not after three months, right? You gathered the requirements, would have been nice to like, you know, agile wasn't that big of a thing back in the day. Like and every two weeks, had we just pulled business in, showed them the iterative development approach and the product which you're building, you yep. would have had issues sooner. So you, you're spot on. Like you know, that that was, and that incident is just embedded very hard in the brain. But there are always like you know ups and downs which comes in all the initiatives, but yep. hasn't been as eye opening as that first experience was. So it was always good, right? Like you always want to keep learning from your mistakes. Absolutely. Better. So, like that—that that was <laughs> the example. Now you made it fresh in my mind again. Uh, <laughs> good old days, I guess. No, I think you know. This is there's always one story for people who believe in uh, you know that 80 percent of the work is actually change management, not technology. There's always a story. <laughs> so I, I always end up bringing that out and asking about it. But great to know, uh, you know. And then you know, I think I hope the younger part of the audience learns from this really well. I see. You know, in, in in customers and in engagement where we, we go and, you know, you have engineers who are working or people on projects who are working, you know, uh, I see the same problem a lot of times where there's a lot of narrow focus on, you know, solutioning, solutioning, solutioning. And, you know, I don't think there's enough conversation with the stakeholders. A, I, I, I don't think there's proper identification of, uh, you know, stakeholders and B, there's not enough conversation with all the stakeholders. So, you know, definitely, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's great to learn from a veteran leader like yourself. 
about this as well moving on i think uh we've talked about change management we've talked about uh you know your learnings and change management being one of the most important ones so changing gears to understanding what do you as a cto see as your top priorities for the next 12 to 18 months gorish hmm there are few of them are that like you know some of the top priorities which i see uh, as we are going through the transformation journey for beacon the first is we want to be like you know we have to be continually obsessed about utilizing technology to create the best in class experiences for our employees and customers right like that the first filter through which we are looking at all the initiatives like you know we are trying to go after So that's the number one thing which uh, cascades across the entire uh, initiative set, like you know, which we look at. Got it. Second one, along similar veins, is uh, how do we evaluate the opportunities to automate the manual, repetitive tasks which, like you know, operators and a lot of the support functions are doing in their day to day, so we can give time back to people. end of the day we are in a service business right we serve people with special needs and we want to give time back for our people so they can spend more time with like you know people with special needs to help them live learn and achieve every day we don't right. want people spending time in technology behind the scenes it should be seamless they should not be spending a lot of time there they should be moving on quickly to get the right information they need and then serve the people like you know which we are in the business for so that is number 2 the last but not the least is just continue to be hyper focused on change management and bring all the people in our journey of utilizing the technologies around ai so ai has like you know i mean obviously folks may be aware that it has just created a lot of buzz ai has been around for a, quite a while now it's just become more accessible nowadays and it's a matter of like you know how do we figure out the opportunities to utilize that yeah and again but aligning with the lens of creating better employee and customer experiences but truly focusing on the change management you'll see a theme here like everything is going to be like you know uh, around change management to ensure that we get good adoption of technology otherwise it, it's all a waste of everybody's time lovely so two questions that come off of this uh, in my mind but uh, so the first is we talked about you know obsession with customer and employee experience right in, in point number 1 so my question is like how do you find the management buy in or how do you create the management or leadership buy in in other verticals right to continuously invest time resources and money into this right because see at the very you are in the services business right so how do you go and tell the other leaders in other verticals that hey you know if you don't use technology you know you won't be able to go from here to here you know like what like what's the business case that you create or you know how do you actually go about getting that buy in because a lot of listeners you know are and you know we speak to them you know every day we speak to a lot of prospects customers every day and they struggle with you know getting budgets getting time allocation more than the money right it's about focus time energy effort buy in all of that because at the end of as we've already talked about change management is a bigger you know part of the entire solution or entire change management or transformation right so how do you create that buy in with other business leaders you know who might be just you know very focused on getting their numbers done getting their uh, you know targets and kpis like how do you do it yeah i think that's a good question right and i think it starts with the alignment at the top so uh, like you know you have to make sure that like you can't like each functional leader uh, has like you know there, there are certain criteria or goals they're trying to meet But right all parts at the top so for us it's been uh, very clear right our ceo judith crawford has been very clear in terms of we want to create like you know best experiences for our people because as like again one of the saying says right you take care of your employees they will take care of the customers and they will the customers like in turn take care of the numbers it yeah. seem cliche but it, there, there is like a lot of truth in that like and we truly believe truly like you know believe that particular concept so there is a good alignment at the top to say that like what are what are the things we are going to go after and we have our core values which are aligning with that so whenever we think about like any initiative or all the things we are trying to do we try to filter them with the value like the core values we have created which right. ultimately is like you know leading up to the creating best in class people experiences 
and utilizing technology to give time back because that directly impacts the service we are providing to our customers uh, which are like you know people with special needs and uh, kids so it, it all lines well again like it, it may feel hard but you have to have a good honest conversation uh, at the executive leadership level even though there may be back and forth then uh, you just have to align on like you know who you are as an organization and when you think about like different initiatives which are trying to come across right whether it's IT or finance or HR or what have you like you always align in terms of what are your core criteria or core values you are going to follow as an as an organization so you have to align on that and if there's not clarity i would encourage like leaders to ask for that it's easier said than done at times but like asking for that prevents a lot of heartburn like at the later stages and you're not always finding yourself in frustrating situations where hey i'm trying to do this and i'm not sure if there's alignment or not like if you have just a broader criteria which is aligned at the top in the very beginning then it just becomes easier for any of the initiatives you have a directional understanding of whether this is going to fly or not or not makes sense and you know let's talk about a case so let's say you went to one of there's a transformation project right and there's let's say there's uh, like disagreement on the value it can add right so let's say for a second i'm giving you a scenario where you are going to a leader you think that there is a possible uh, you know roi large roi and they disagree with it right so how would you tackle that situation is it going to be like a pilot a poc like what are you going to do to you know push it ahead that that's a good question are that so first is like i mean try to gather as much data as possible right like if possible like you're trying to like any initiative stems with some sort of a need right whether it's Hey, there is a pain point which our operations is experiencing, or some of our people are experiencing where hey, this is crippling to the core business functions, right? Or there is an efficiency area where hey, we have always done it this way, and people don't know that there might be other options out there. So, right. how do you package a business case together to say that hey, we are seeing this as an opportunity area, whether it's like you know, I mentioned about like you know, saving time. to give time back to our people so they can use that time with our customers right and, uh, like like you know whether it's kids or people with special needs so start putting like you know on your whatever business case you can put around that because you have an inclination of what sort of problem you are trying to solve so as much data as you can gather i encourage like you know people to try to gather that information because that that is always helpful an objective way to evaluate right like it, it can say a 30% of xyz hours or or whatever that may look like and then you hit hit a hit on a point which is about the pilot or a proof of concept don't try to go too heavy right like any initiative if you are like hey this try to put some data together to say this makes sense you have your core values try to put that filters uh, on right. like initiatives which gives you a, a initial check of hey this makes sense Now don't spend 6 months a year to find your perfect solution because there is no such thing. How can you do a proof of concept in a very lightweight environment and as quickly as possible and engage with your end users? Like yep. I you know for us what we have done is we are creating an environment where it's okay to pull over end users in early and let them know that that it's not going to be a perfect solution. What we are trying to do is we are trying to have you as a part of the journey. to validate that hey we have heard these problems from you we think this is the solution let's try out something in a matter of few weeks so we can get something out in front of them because if something does not work it's better to know that sooner than 6 months later where you spend a lot of time and energy and it's like you know waste of everybody's time um, along the way so like we have been trying to get nimble and again it's easier said than done at times it's like how do you choose the partners what sort of technologies you can use to do proof of concepts right like the very critical things so how do you validate whether something is going to work or not in a proof of concept capacity and mm -hmm. with, uh, in this day and age like there are a lot of technologies out there which you can utilize to have like you know lightweight like e even create a simple ui of what it's going to look like without a full blown solution like you know being ready and things like that so how do you uh like you know uh, continuously evaluate your innovative techniques to try to get some sort of a proof of concept faster to the audience to validate a particular use case is what i would recommend so two things right align at the top 
filter through the core values lens, uh, try to gather as much data as you can because you're trying to solve some sort of a problem. Uh, otherwise, you would not bring that initiative up. And the second is like how, try, again, try to pull the people who you are going to try to solve the problem for in the journey earlier. Yep. Do a proof of concept, get some sort of a validation, then do a pilot capacity and then do a full, like, you know, a region-wise rollout or some sort of a staggered rollout approach versus, again, waiting for a year to build a perfect solution and have a rollout plan where you'll do all at once. Try to do it in piecemeal and have iterative value delivery is what I would recommend. Lovely. Lovely, got her. So, you know, value alignment at the top, uh, then business case. I think numbers are, are a rough business case, as you mentioned, right? Then pull in your users early and do a POC or a pilot with them and end it with phased rollout. So, absolutely. Three main uh, points divided into five sub points. I think this is super, super helpful, Gaurav. Uh, I've already got new questions in my head about, you know, how do you choose the partners, etc. But maybe we'll keep it for another day. <laughs> I'll, I'll move on to the next ones. Uh, so, you mentioned, you know, best in class employee experience, you know, as one of the things that is your top priority over the next 12 to 18 months, right? So, in that specific, let's kind of zoom in there. How do you think, you know, digital transformation has disrupted the world of IT service delivery and, and what needs to change uh, moving forward? That's a, yeah, that's a good question. And it's, the world is evolving so rapidly, right? So much has changed in the world of IT service delivery. So some of the things like, you know, which come to mind are, first is like, you know, it, I think the complexity has increased quite a bit. If when you think about like, you know, the businesses now, like, you know, you have all sorts of solutions available out in the market, whether it's the cloud solutions, you think about the IoT devices, which are out there, things are getting like, you know, a little bit intricate, I would say. Yeah. And now it's about like, you know, how do you make sure that your IT service delivery teams are upskilled to manage these new hybrid systems, which can span across like, you know, both the traditional and the cloud environments. So just continuing to upskill and be aware of what's out there uh, in this complex environment and trying to find your right fit. Uh, right. I think that, that's the number one thing which comes to mind. And and when you think about like I touched a little bit on like you know how do you do proof of concepts and have like that foster uh, delivery yeah. to validate the concepts I think it lines up with what the expectations from an IT organization in this day and age is right uh, speed the demand for faster delivery is skyrocketing like your business partners are expecting things to be delivered faster and yeah. with like you know with some of the new technologies out there it's it's very much doable uh things have changed a lot like 15 years ago when it used to take a year to implement small things now it can be done in a matter of weeks yep so we are in this race of like you know uh finding the finish line faster so rapid and efficient service delivery is a key and with that like you know how do you uh, get there as an it organization so having some governance around like you know i think some of the key practices which we are trying to enable or how do you work in an agile environment so you can have iterative delivery for your business and validate like whether you, what you're building makes sense or not. And then the DevOps practices, right? Like how do you kind of yes. sleep, make sure like your pipelines are automated and you're not spending a lot of energy in terms of pushing things around and like, you know, in a safe and secure environment as well. So that's the second thing and the businesses are changing fast. So uh, aligning with that also makes sense. You, your IT delivery has to keep up with that. Otherwise, a solution today is not going to be applicable six months from now because the needs will keep on changing. So that's the second thing. The third is like, uh, it, it's it's a must have. Like it's not one of the most fun items, but like with all this digital boom, uh, there's always that uh, lingering thought around the cybersecurity concerns. Right. It's become so available, so open. People are expecting things like, you know, even businesses are trying out a lot of new tools themselves. Like with more digital touch points now available, there is a broader risk. Like, you know, you're opening up like, you know, risk for potential attacks, uh, like through these different channels. So how do you make sure that like, you know, you always are staying on top of cybersecurity? It's like, we don't want to be reactive. We always want to be proactive, yep. monitoring tools and oh, the full nine yards there. We have to make sure that we are always on top of our game there uh, because you don't want to be caught napping in that particular area. 
And last but not the least, uh, there, there is like one clear winner. It's always the user. Like yep. everything what we are doing, user experience has to take the center stage. The goal is not just about like, you know, delivering functionality anymore, but it's about delivering a seamless enjoyable experience which now has become like table stakes i think in this day and age people expect it uh, so how do you just make sure like you're keeping your user at the center of everything you're doing is very critical so these are some of the things which come to mind and it, it, it's the world has changed a lot in the 15 years i've been in this space uh, that's for sure absolutely got it so just taking from what you said so what are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced in managing IT service delivery for a large enterprise like Beacon Mobility and how did you overcome them? Like the largest challenges and how are you overcoming them on a day-to-day -day basis at uh, Beacon? Yeah, good, good question Adit. So for us at Beacon, we have been going through a digital transformation over these last few years. I've been with the company for about a couple of years and I've seen a massive uh, like you know change transformation digital transformation happening in the last two years i've been here uh so one of the biggest changes have been around right eliminating these manual uh, paper and pen processes we're implementing all these foundational technologies which takes a step forward in terms of uh, creating more streamlined processes uh, for whether it's your hr area your finance areas your operations areas your critical routing scheduling functions name it so there is a big transformation which is happening from manual paper pen processes to foundational technologies getting implemented right and continuing to be again fo focused and very obsessed about like you know delivering the best employee and customer experience like that's been a big focus for us as an organization so e even with this right when you think about like pen and paper to a foundational system it, it feels on like surface right it's a it's a step in the right direction right you know why you're doing it it's going to create better experiences but end of the day a change is a change right it, like you know people get used to doing things a certain way and when you ask them to do things in a different way yep. it's uncomfortable doesn't matter how good of a change it is how, what benefits it's going to bring to the people on the other side eventually it, it's still hard so we've been very focused on like, you know, the change management as well for our people and being very mindful of that. So what we have done is uh, we've been very diligent on bringing our frontline employees, our operations leaders into the transformation journey with us, not at the very end, but from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We are not building and implementing these technologies in a silo, in a science lab, but it's like, you know, we're very front and center with awesome. our frontline audience ops leaders to ensure that they are set up for success to use these new technologies and we're not afraid of failures right like we there is no perfect state and our audiences don't expect perfection as well so we have built that sort of trust with our people where they are part of the journey and they know that it's always going to be with that continuous improvement mindset and the results of this have been like very promising uh, so what I'll sum it up with is the key is to never take change management aspect for granted and ensure that all the people who are going to use the technology on the other side, they're part of the entire journey with us. With us. Don't be shy of that like, not seeing a perfect state because there is no such thing. Amazing, amazing daughter. So, you know, I've decided now that, you know, everyone who comes to talk to Lena and I have to school them about change management, I'm going to show them this video about you. Yeah, talking about change management, I think. Oh, yeah, it's like learnings, Adit. So many learnings along the way. And uh, again, as I mentioned, right, like I, I'm a true technology person, that person at my heart. It took. It, it's not easy, right? Like to change that mindset, it takes Absolutely. like conscious effort, right? It takes conscious effort. It takes practice. It it takes you to raise your hand and say, "Hey, I need help. Like, how can we gather all the leaders together? You're not going to solve it yourself." So it's been like just constant evolution and I see like, you know, who I was 15 years ago and who I am today and like the way I operated back then and the way I operate now, it's night and day. But you just like continue to improve with each experience. There's always opportunity areas and how do you just continually improve is the name of the game at least. Like, you know, we are playing, I've been playing and... And I think also, the engineers, you know, it becomes even tougher because I think... Why, 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 give me a problem, I'll solve it, you know. <laughs> Right. He's taking whatever, you know, yeah. other exams uh, globally, you know, it's weird. She's kind of wired to solve problems, right? 
Exactly. Oh my God. Uh, speaking, speaking my heart and my mind here. Yep. I totally agree with that. And it's like, it takes a little bit of conditioning, but you know, you, you live and you learn and you know, you keep adapting. Interestingly, it happens with even today, like out of 10 times, I'll still do it. What's our toys? You're right, like human inclination is just like you, you just start becoming more conscious now and you know, you know what, what things not to do because of the learnings you have had in the past. But it's amazing, right? Like how the mind evolves, how the heart continues to evolve over time. And uh, yep. it's yeah, it's like always being open. And the other thing, uh, uh, getting like you know, a little bit off tangent here, but it's not to take things personally like that's been a good learning for me like you know sometimes when you have learnings it, it's it's easy again it's one of those items which is easier said than done but it's not to take things personally because the, it, it, when once you start feeling it you get too defensive about things you will not be in the mindset of improving yourself right because with every opportunity there is always something you can learn and do better the next time so just having that mindset of uh, there is no perfect state. There will always, whenever things feel that they are going good, bad, or ugly, like you can still pick something from it and like improve for the next time. So how do you just make continuous improvements, fail fast, and then learn from it, and like you know get up again and just keep moving forward? Uh, I agree. So they, uh, just, I agree. So no, I agree so much. I think some of the best people at Lina are the ones who can take feedback without being defensive. And I think it's about you know. Saying that the feedback is coming to this situation, it does not is not it does not say that I am not capable, right? It says that yeah. this particular you know thing can be project, it could be anything, you know, presentation, whatever it is, right? It can be anything. it can be improved, and and just taking that learning from and why I yeah hundred uh, percent Gaurav, I think uh, you know great great call out. Moving forward, I think. You know, you mentioned AI, you mentioned how you are pushing people to use AI, uh, you know, in their day-to-day -day work and being open to use, uh, you know, AI at Beacon Mobility to get better, uh, you know, at operations, everything they do, right? So my question to you then becomes, uh, Gaurav, AI today has become a transformative technology across industries, right? Yeah. How your organization leveraged or planning to leverage AI or generative AI to enhance business and operations? Yeah, Adit, this is this is an area which I'm very passionate about and I'm very optimistic about uh, AI and the impact it will have uh, to our organization and to just like, you know, the broader society in general. Uh, like some of the things we are thinking about is, again, aligning with how AI is going to be used to improve our people's experiences and like, you know, end of the day, give time back in their day. So they can continue to serve more of our customers and open time up for more human to human interaction. So that's our like overarching goal. That's how we are thinking about utilizing AI is to improve experiences and give time back to our people. So some areas I'll, I'll, I'd like to highlight around this are the first is around safety of our passengers, drivers and the society in general. We utilize a system called Lytx Drive Cam which utilizes AI to identify risky driving behaviors real time and it provides alerts, audible alerts real time to help make adjustments for the drivers right there and then. Well, what happens is, yeah, you, you're not always, like you're not going to drive badly intentionally. So what happens is it makes you aware, right? Like if you're going a little bit over the speed limit or like, you know, you're not stopping like complete stops where you're supposed to take uh, complete stops. It will just remind you that hey like you know you're getting close to the speed limits be aware of that and then it just it, it people just need that slight trigger right and they'll make the adjustments because a lot of the things are just unconscious behaviors and it allows people to make the adjustments real time which creates in a much safer environment for all of us right so it, it's amazing it's an absolutely like you know it's the number one use case which creates the safety of the society and i love it the Amazing. second one, the second one which comes to is around the employee self-service experience. Like, you know, uh, chatbots have become more available uh, again nowadays. And we are very excited about the partnership. We have actually started with you, other than the Lena AI team around it. So we are actively in the implementation stage of uh, creating an employee self-service experience. And, and again, right, doing the pilot, rolling it out in a regional uh, fashion is the name of the game for us. 
So we are very excited about it. We got a lot of like, you know, engagement from our stakeholders to do a lot of work and uh, continue to push this initiative forward. And last but not the least is around the robotic process automation, RPA, uh, using a tool called UiPath. So we're looking at automating some of the manual repetitive tasks, which can be automated uh, by UiPath. And one of the very common examples, which I'm sure a lot of people may already be aware of, is when you think about the accounts payable invoice uh, process, the accounts payable team, they process thousands of invoices, uh, which get keyed in manually uh, today. Uh, it's a simpler use case where you can have a bot, like there's a consistent pattern where you get like these kinds of invoices, they have to be keyed into a certain way in the finance system. And the bot can basically replicate the same thing over and over again with the same set of consistency and accuracy. So it's, it's an example of like, you know, how we are thinking about utilizing a tool called UiPath. And I am very excited about like, you know, the integration between all these technologies as well. I think it will create yep. like a different kind of magic when all these things blend together and chatbot creating certain things to automate certain tasks, like the, it's, it's going to be magical. So I know we have chatted about this uh, quite a bit. And I'm excited about like, you know, just the potential of this. It, it just, it still gives me goosebumps, uh, the whole topic of AI. But end of the day, it's not trying to get too carried away. Focus on things which will create value. And again, you want things which are going to be utilized and not just like, you know, sit uh, in the side and gather dust. So we are being very mindful of that. That makes a lot of sense. So you, you've talked about change management so much that I am now forced to ask this question. <laughs> So, you know, we've been on this journey of doing, uh, uh, you know, virtual assistant for employees uh, with, you know, Beacon Mobility with you, Gaurav. And, you know, I, I know, you know, you got the pilot done, you know, and all, all of that. But can you, you know, detail it out for the audience, right? How did you run the change management process that we've been talking about for the last, you know, 30 minutes? And how did you actually implement it in the project of that virtual assistant for employees that we're doing together? Absolutely, Aditya. So, uh, I'm trying to recall, right? Like we started this journey about six, nine months ago now. And uh, we started again, like, you know, try to pull the frontline audience in, in the beginning part of the journey. So when we, uh, like, you know, initially talked to you, we were excited about like, you know, hey, there's so much potential. It can help answer like, you know, X, Y, Z questions for people. We get so many tickets coming in today around all these different areas around HR or like fleet or operations or you name it. But like, instead of getting too carried away and trying to think about like, hey, we believe these are the problems it's going to solve. What we did was we tried to get people from all the different functions together with us, all the way from drivers to operators on the field to our support functions. And we sat them in a room to say that, hey, like if you had a technology like this where you could ask anything and you would get responses uh, real time and accurate uh, and if the answers were not provided you could like you know it will find the right person to get you the answers as quickly as possible and you'll not have to remember the 10 phone numbers to call or 10 email distribution lists to email things out like what questions would you like to be answered like what are the things you really have on a day-to-day -day basis we sat then down and we actually gathered a list of all the requirements. We did whiteboarding sessions, everybody wrote out. We walked away with 100 items, which people like, you know, could answer across the different functions. Yeah. And that is what we used as a premise to say, hey, Nina AI team, these are the questions we would like to answer. Now let's think about like what, what steps we need to take to get these answers. Like what kinds of documents would be needed to answer some of these questions. What kind of data you need from different systems? What integrations might be needed to like, you know, answer some of the questions and improve employees experience. So I think like that's the key difference is like you in generally have a sense, right? Like I would not say you, you're clueless completely. Well, you, you understand, right? Your business, you understand what the needs of the people might be, but pulling them in early in the journey does two things. First is like, you know, just like there are no assumptions. You, you, you hear questions which you could never even imagine. And like it shatters all the assumptions you have around what questions people may have. And you truly get all the questions people really have in the day to day. And the second is you bring them in on the journey with you from the very moment. So that change management has already started there because you've said that, hey, let me hear, truly listen 
to what like you know problems you have and let's work on it together to get to a solution together so it's not like a tool which is going to get forced on them it's a tool which they have requested they have said what my needs are and now you let me know how you can solve it what help you need from us so you gather a lot of excitement during that initial part when you bring people in on the journey sooner so like that's one like you know that's been a big uh big impact item for from a positive perspective for us uh, through this initiative and now we're getting to a stage where like you know we are getting very close to doing uh, a user acceptance testing so we already have the group right now we're not scrambling the last minute to say hey, who are our uad people yeah we already have that we had them engaged from the initial part yeah they're killing like you know two birds with one stone you get people involved early and now you're not scrambling in the later parts of the initiative to find your business testers to find who wants to go first to do a pilot you already have that figured out from the get go and the change management is not a one small milestone in the project which you're doing at the end it's just continuous uh from the very beginning so i think like that's what are really well for us uh, is uh, what i would say other i can completely relate i think the best implementations that have been done you know of course we have had a great experience uh, with you guys at beacon mobility and then then many others as well i think in the best ones the users think that they are the ones who created the tool they actually had created the tool right spot on spot on that and, and and at that time you know they are not you know picky and to the oh this is not working or oh, you know out of the 100 it is only answer 90 80 whatever it is right or yeah. you know when i say you know this specific thing it is not like they they are very accommodative because they feel like it's it's their journey right so yeah no, i i agree and i can relate to that with our you know with our journey together and uh, no i think well great learning for the audience and gora thank you so much for sharing this absolutely absolutely but yeah. asha it, it does not become a us versus them thing right just to add on to what you're saying it's not a us versus them thing it's like we are in it together will will it's not going to be perfect you get that extra grace and patience from the people on the other side because they know that like you know the intentions are very pure and you're working with them they know what's coming what to expect and you're setting that the game of setting expectations as well right like they know it's not going to be perfect like they are going to help us exact a uh, perfect uh, situation like you know as we keep moving forward so it i love it like and i just like simple things like that it's not very hard to do you yeah. just have to be very mindful about that right and not be shy about like you know pulling more people in we typically are shy like we want to get that perfect state before we show to the business like that that used to be my mindset as well a long time but no such thing you pull people in early like you you bring them in on the journey and yes. just flows really well it just like flows well is how i've seen uh, I, i love this absolutely makes sense so you know just moving off of this like just a continuation to this question so in terms of these you know experiments that you do or in terms of like the enterprise employee virtual assistant that we're building together like or or any such idea right how do yep. you prioritize investments in in these areas like because see some of these might be and for the listeners on this podcast you know some of these areas generative ai ai yeah, looks amazing to talk about it's the buzz today right but yeah you know it might get tough to you know convince other people and we've talked a little bit about this earlier as well but let's say you have 10 projects you know or, or you know, as a cto or as an it leader even as a you know, operations leader or even as a ceo you might get like 10 projects or 10 ideas on the ground right so hey how do you evaluate and or prioritize them you know in in terms of okay out of these 10 i want to pick up these three for a pilot you mentioned the framework on how to get to a you know yeah if you have decided one how do you go about it right but yeah. out 10 well, how would you prioritize and you know, like how would you find the budgets etc how would you do that yeah yeah So are it uh, I think we touched a little bit on that uh, it may sound like a broken record but like the first thing which goes around this is like we have an alignment from an executive leadership person like this right yep both is very simple like we want to create the best in class employee and customer experience utilizing technology so like that that's the framework like the high level framework we have so anything we are going to do is it going to create a better experience for our employees or customers if the answer is yes then we move on to the next things and then the next things come into play right like hey uh, of all the use cases 
what is the complexity of execution on these use cases, right? Like if something is going to take, it's, it's a massive lift, it's going to right. take a lot of time to build something or like, you know, roll something out. And if there are like other ones which are like quick wins, then we, we well, like, you know, we look at that as a criteria. So complexity of the different use cases and what it would take to execute on these things and how big of a change management effort it's going to be around these yeah. things. So we factor that in as well. And then you have like, you know, after the experiences, you have your criteria of like how much time it's going to give back to our people. So that's the other thing we look at. If there's an initiative, which is like, you know, it's a quick win and it gives like, you know, decent amount of time back to our people quickly, which means that the, the, the more time we free up for our people and the faster we can do it, it means that they can spend that time in more human to human interactions with or other employees out in the front lines or the customers. So that, th these are some of the criteria we look at when we're looking at like, you know, evaluation and implementing uh, some of these ideas. Okay. Now, one question that's just coming off, and I think you mentioned this, you know, about choosing partners, etc. Before, and I'm, I, I'm not going to get it into it today, but build versus buy. I think build versus partner, like that's a big decision in a CIO's mind, right? Or any leader's yeah. mind, right? So in AI, there's so many vendors and, you know, of course, the, because of the API availability of, you know, open AI and, you know, 15 other uh, upload and then open source models, you know, Vicuna, GPTJ, whatever it is, right? Yeah. It has become like a lot of people are saying, I want to build, right? Uh, a lot of people are saying that, you know, I want to partner. So how do you decide that, you know, is that use case to use case? Is it, you know, like, okay, no, we want to build only or is it no, we want to buy only? Like, how do you decide that? Yeah. So for us, at, uh, I think in general, it's like use case by use case. But when you think about the industry in general, right? It, it, it's not a technology organization. And like we are in the transportation business. We want to help people live, learn and achieve every day to their full potential. Right? That, that's what we are in the business of. We are not in the business of building software. So like that, that's like the 30,000 foot view answer. So if there are providers out there, right, like which already have the capabilities, uh, it's the price point is palatable and you can get value to our internal employees and customers faster. Uh, we typically would lean towards that, right? We're spending a lot of time to build something and maintain it and have resources around it to do that. But there could be some cases where like, you know, that makes sense. So it's not uh, always a uh, a vanilla answer but like that, that is kind of the mindset or the approach we have when we think about like you know what makes sense whether it's a partner or whether you're building it, something when you look at a partner like you know there's several things we look at a partnership as well partner in the true definition you're looking for that partnership is what we're looking for to be completely honest so uh, you're well aware of that like we started this journey a long time ago and it, it started with just education, right? Like even before the chat GPT were like, boom, like we started the conversations with some communication opportunity. Yep. yep. And then kept building upon that. So it's it's all about like, you know, that yep. these kinds of things which are very important because it's not a one and done thing. It's like, these are the partnerships you want to build and form for years to come. Yeah, well, I, I completely conquer. So what I'm seeing in the industry talking to, you know, technology leaders and IT leaders is, you know, essentially that if there is something that is core to your business, right? So like something that you think could be IP or could be like a significant differentiation in terms of how you like decrease operating model costs, right? Like yeah. real impact on operating model, like figure out, uh, you know, some, I don't know, some AI way or doing root optimization. I'm just making things up, right? Yeah. Like that, that could like give you a competitive advantage in your core business. Then probably it makes sense to you know build a team, invest, build a team, and add, you know build the the model. But for everything else, you know, this you have many other priorities to be taken care of in your core business than to build here. Yeah. A simple example of that, Adit, would be right. Like so, we are using Workday for HR, payroll, and recruiting system. Right? We're not going to create our own HR, payroll, and recruiting. System. It's it's a it's a very like a, it's an outlandish example, but it's just like it puts things into perspective. Like that that's the kind of mindset like you know we have. Makes a lot of sense. So, you know, I know we are coming almost to time. So, one big question that I think, you know, is in everyone's mind today, right? And we face this question whenever we talk to uh, large enterprise organizations, like just like yours. It is, you know, AI means a lot of data. 
for training right ai means a lot of and you know especially like virtual assistants like we've been talking about right enterprise employee virtual assistant means access to erp crm hris its and multiple systems so the employee can do things on the mobile right or on chat whatever right Absolutely. so you know with that i'd love to come to the last part of my questions for you gaurav with ai advancements there are growing concerns about cyber security risks how do you ensure responsible ai implementation and address potential security vulnerabilities yeah Th- that's a good question are there right and like it's in it's on everybody's mind like that was on my mind when the whole ai piece came out and like or it became more accessible i mean ai has been around for a very long time now but yeah it became more accessible and it's like always it's like the biggest fear any it leader has is right you don't want to be caught napping like everything else is like yeah. the explanation of a business application does not work or things don't go well in projects you can there's there's always like you know a reason behind it but if there's a cybersecurity breach which happens like there there's no way to hide from a leadership perspective like that it's always top of mind uh, for me and for the organization so there are few things uh, we are doing here radit which i think will answer or touch on like you know the three questions you have mentioned the first is we have to understand the risk like don't just like you know put like you know hype about the risk like be understand what your risk is be aware of what kind of data is needed around your various ai use cases right because it's going to vary depending on what problem you're trying to solve it's not going to be a one size fit all and you apply the same level of security around whether it's like read access or write access uh, which you have traditionally applied to your different applications right uh, whether it's your critical hr payroll applications there, there is a hyper sense of data security in those applications i think it's an extension of that like that same kind of security model needs to be carried over uh, into the ai tools so understanding the risk and being very mindful in your implementations of how you are protecting similar to how you would implement like you know these critical hr finance or customer applications the second thing is uh, we need to have governing policies around the privacy and the security of the data which is being used in the ai applications and like we have a, a framework in place which we are following in all the initiatives and you're well aware of this in the lena ai initiative and we are doing the same with our ui path and rp like you know the manual process automation opportunities we have an, a framework in place around like data privacy and security and we ensure that like you know those are getting followed uh, completely as a part of the implementation of the initiatives then it's like after it's implemented you you've done all the right things right to ensure that it continues to stay that way so that when enhancements are going to happen on the systems it's about continuous monitoring of these ai systems and regular audits to ensure that security and privacy is continuously preserved and then last but not the least i think like this touches on the uh, third question you mentioned is about how to remove undue fear it's about continuous education for our stakeholders i believe it's very important like share the best practices around data privacy and security make sure your broader audience is aware right like what your guiding principles are how are you thinking about it it's always top of mind it's very important because i don't think it's the responsibility of just one specific id function it's a responsibility of the entire organization to be in it together and it starts with the education and a continuous education journey on that so like these are some of the things which come to mind and what we are doing uh, on this area lovely water i think this has been amazing uh thank you so much for taking your time and doing this for us and with us today um clear yeah. yeah. have a great day ahead and hope to get you again on uh, similar such podcast so absolutely thank you adit thanks for having me and uh, super excited about like you know where we are headed together in this journey and where ai is ju- in general headed for the society used rightly and used wisely for the right use cases it's going to create a massive impact for absolutely Thank you so much. Oh, I would have.